Hi, um, welcome to SOCH 434, and this is the uh, videotaped explanation of the final project. Um, what we did in the class in Portalis is the United Way was interested in how or if there was a need for public transportation in Portalis and Clovis. Well, we figured out that doing a survey would be the best way to approach this, and the students went out and got survey data and we put it in the computer and that's what we spent most of the semester doing. Um, unfortunately because you're distance students you couldn't participate in that but this is the point in the course where you really can participate um, where distance isn't a problem. So we're trying to figure out um, is there a need for public transportation like a fixed route bus system where you would wait at a bus stop and you know that the bus comes every 30 minutes or whatever. Um, and if it were available, would people actually use it? So those were our main um, questions. And then we were also interested in what kinds of people would use it. Do we have a big low-income population that would use it? And what would people use it for? Would it be for necessities like going to work, um, going to uh, shopping, going to medical appointments? Or would it be going to the movies in Clovis um, or something like that? So those are the sorts of questions that we asked. Now, it'll be important for you to become familiar with the survey. It's not very long. Um, the survey itself is in the Group Projects folder in Blackboard. So you want to print that out for yourself so that you can refer to it um, unless you're really good at switch, switching between a bunch of different screens at the same time. Um, you'll want that before you start looking at the other stuff. Now, the files that you'll need are in three places. The Group Projects folder, the United Way folder, and the Lecture Supplements folder. So the first thing, print out that survey form from the Group Projects uh, folder, read it over, make sure that you understand it. Uh, then go to the United Way folder and you'll see two SPSS data sets. One is labeled Linear. You only need that one and you'll only use it when you do a test called linear correlation. For all the other statistical tests, use the other SPSS data set. It has to do with how the program is, is set up. Okay, um, so how do, you, uh, how do you get into that? Once you're logged in remotely, open up Firefox on the um, remote computer and log into Blackboard and download it from there, save it into my documents, not on your computer, but on the university computer that you're logged into. And then you'll be able to open it up and that computer will automatically launch SPSS, which is the statistical program that we're using. Um, and when you save things, save them to the my documents folder um, and you can email them to yourself in order to save them. I wouldn't trust them on that university computer. I don't know how often they clear out uh, that information. Okay, um, when the instructions for what to do in SPSS are in the lecture supplements folder and you'll see it, it's pretty clearly labeled. It says SPSS menu instructions or something like that. Uh, that's the one you want and it gives you the exact uh, things that you need to choose from the pull down menu. Now here's an overview um, excuse me, of, of what we're doing. First you want to see what's in the data. How did these people answer? You know we have about 500 surveys, pretty good sample size, so how did they answer? To find that out you're going to go to the top menu, it's going to say analyze, descriptives, and then you want to choose frequency. That's going to just, and then that's going to give you the f how the people answered the survey. The column that you need to look at is the one that says percentage. The, the, it's in the middle. Um, you can ignore the other ones. They don't. They simply just. They don't give you any information that you need. You just need the percent column, and it'll tell you what percentage of people answered the questions in what way. So the process goes like this. Take a look at your frequencies. See if anything looks interesting. Would anything be of help to the United Way in figuring out this public transportation thing? 
Um, and if it would, make a note of what those are and think about are there any relationships between these questions, between the variables that might be interesting to them. Now, once you have figured that out, you're going to do something called cross tabs. And I believe that's analyze, descriptives, cross tabs. And once you're in there, there's a button that says cells, and be sure you click percentage. So it gives you the percentages and then hit OK and it'll go. Um, what cross tabs does, it gives you a, a four cell table where you can compare if somebody answered one way on a question, how did they answer on another question? So let's say your question was if somebody would use the public transportation to go shopping, are these the same people? that have reported that they've missed work because they didn't have transportation. So you would move those two variables, one in the row, one in the column, hit OK. SPSS will give you a table that shows you, of the people who said, I missed work for no transportation, how many of those said they would also use the public transportation if we had it to go shopping. So questions like that, um, are important. We want to know what people would use this for and what kinds of things, um, you know, how, how does this impact people? If they can't get to work, if they can't get to medical appointments, how much does public transportation affect their lives? So that's how you do a cross tab. So you're going to go through your frequencies, take a look at the questions, ask yourself, I wonder if there's any relationship between people who answered a certain way on this question and the way they answered on a different question. And then you would run a cross tab. You want to do probably about a dozen of those and you want to, as you do these, cut, you can cut and paste charts from SPSS into a Word document. You simply copy and paste. And that way you have those, you can build your paper um, by doing that. And it's good to do that as you go so you don't have to go back and do everything again. Then you can email that to yourself from within the university computer that you're using. <coughs> the next thing that we want to ask is, okay, in our uh, tables that we got from the, uh, from the cross tabs, are those relationships statistically significant? Now, statistically significant refers to the lack of statistical error. So can we be sure that this is not happening just because of chance? Can we be sure that this is an actual statistically significant error-free result? You want to do a chi-square, C-H-I square, on these uh, to determine if there is a statistically significant relationship. Your significance level needs to be 0.05 or lower for there to be a significant association between the variables. So um, the, this one is a little more involved, but if you look at the PowerPoint instructions in the lecture supplements SPSS instructions file, um, you'll see how to do a chi-square on there. But basically, the only column you're interested in when it gives you the results is the significance, and it's usually abbreviated SIGNIF or something, or SIG, something like that. Um, that's what you're interested in. If it's 0.05 or less, then you can say there was a statistically significant relationship between these two variables. Now, sometimes it's nice to see with a lot of variables um, how people answered and it lets you spot things. I'm going to suggest one correlation that you run that has an interesting result. Um, before you do it, you need to download the data set that says SPSS linear for linear correlation and open that one up and follow the directions on the PowerPoint as to how to do this. I think it goes to correlate bivariate and then you move your variables over. Um, I'm going to suggest a correlation because I did it in class and I found it interesting. For the variables of 
the variable names are use1, use2, use3, all the way up to use7. The question is, if public transportation were available, what would you use it for? And then we have those seven choices. Move those variables over into the variable box and do a correlation on them. Now, when you get the correlation, you're looking at, for numbers that are, say, 0.4 is a it's a weak correlation it's worth mentioning 0.5 is a little stronger 0.6 is, is really a, you can say that it's a fairly strong correlation um, those are the kinds of numbers that you're looking for and you're looking for a significance level that accompanies those numbers that is 0.05 or less but look at that and see what the data tell you um, and then you can email me um, and tell me what you came up with and I can give you some further direction. So those are the statistical tests that that are appropriate for our data from the survey. There are more uh, tests that are possible that will be on the quiz and you'll want to look at the other PowerPoint under lecture supplements for that and that's linear regression and ANOVA. The reason that we're not doing those tests is our survey questions aren't the proper type of question for that. We need linear data for that and we don't have a whole lot of questions like that. We only have two. Okay, well I hope that this was helpful and um, uh, let me talk about your actual research paper. It re it's a research paper. It's very much like a science paper. As you run these statistical tests, think about it as doing experiments in a test tube. Um, an important thing to remember is if you're doing experiments in a lab, you put your chemicals in the test tube and nothing happens, you still need to write that down. That's a finding. And it's useful for United Way to know, hey, they tested the relationship between those variables and found out that there wasn't one. So don't think that if you get a negative result that it doesn't go in your paper. It does go in. Um, in fact, negative results give us just as much information as positive results. When you're doing your paper, keep in mind what the United Way needs to know, um, what kinds of people would use public transportation, what are the issues with transportation. Keep that in mind. Um, you'll have a very short introduction, kind of maybe a paragraph, talking about public transportation and the study. Um, your methods section will be very short. You'll just say that students in Portales did... Uh, surveys in the community. It was a random sample, maybe two sentences, and that the data were analyzed in SPSS, three sentences. <laughs> the biggest part of your paper is the data analysis. You will first talk about your frequencies, and you're basically telling the story of um, the data analysis. First I did the frequencies, and I thought that these survey responses were interesting. So I decided to do cross tabs. And so paste, show a uh, paste in a cross tabs table, show the cross tab and then talk about what it means and what the significance of it is. Then go on to the next one. Do maybe half a dozen of those. And, and then move on to say, I wanted to know if these were statistically significant. So I did chi square and then do the same thing with your chi squares. Um, this I found was significant. Show them the results, cut and paste from SPSS. Um, this is the next one, this is the next one. And finally, you'll end with linear correlation, where you will say, I was interested in the strength of the statistically significant relationship between the variables, and then talk about any correlations that you did, pasting the table in. Now, if you do a lot of variables, Word can't handle the width of the table from SPSS. It'll cut it off. So you might have to recreate, like write it down on a piece of scratch paper and then put the numbers into a smaller table on Word, just the ones that you're interested in. Um, that's the only way that I can think of to do it. Uh, there's, it's, it's just SPSS allows... Uh, words to go off of the margins and word doesn't so that's a limitation of word um, it shouldn't be too much of a problem though um, there should only be a couple of times that that affects you okay um, send me an email if you have any other questions and um, 
I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.